Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. This video is basically going to be a mishmash of uh, events that I find uh, extremely significant in the last uh, little while as far as abrupt climate change and extreme weather events um, and ongoing faster than expected events in, in our climate system. So most videos I narrow down and drill into a specific topic and uh, so please you know if you go to uh, my YouTube channel Paul Beckwith and or my blog paulbeckwith.net you can do searches for certain key phrases and you'll find that I have produced videos on just about every uh, climate change topic I'm trying to figure out what's happening you know how abrupt climate change is proceeding joining the dots and based on what's happened in the past and what's happening now, trying to make projections into what's going to happen in the near future. So this video, I'm not talking about one specific topic. I'm going to talk about some of the most interesting plots and graphs that allow you to actually see what's happening with abrupt climate change that explain things fairly well. So I'll be using Twitter to, to do this, so let me get right into it uh, here. Um, so, I'm sure most of you are familiar with my blog, uh, website paulbeckwith.net, uh, and uh, please uh, consider supporting my independent climate research. I basically, you know, there's no holes barred. I tell you exactly what is happening to the best of my abilities based on my engineering and physics and uh, you know science climate change uh, renewable energy uh, background we're a world of specialists and specialists aren't going to understand all of the connections and, and solve this problem and that's the problem with the science scientific community in general that's the problem with the way our our society is structured the way our universities are structured you know, people are way over specialized and we need to join the dots to um, figure out what's going on. So please uh, go to paulbeckwith.net and, uh, and uh, please consider donating to support my work. I've got about 550 videos trying to, uh, you know, over the last, you know, two, two, three, three years, I guess, trying to explain what's going on. Okay, so um, basically... Um, if you go to my Twitter at Paul H. Beckwith, um, then I'm going to, these are the key issues I've been tweeting. I, I, I've gone through the history of my Twitter feed um, in the last few months, and I've, I've basically picked out the most important, the most significant um, issues um, as far as abrupt climate change is concerned. So I'm going to bring them to you here. Um, if you're in the U.S., um, you know, anywhere in the Midwest, you've been experiencing tremendous flooding. You, there was a very, very cold winter because the jet stream, jet stream trough came down far south and was stuck in place. So very cold, a lot of snow, and of course all that snow has been melting and that trough is still there extending into the spring. You know, we're, into, we're nearing the end of May and that trough is still there. So we're getting tremendous rainfall in many parts of the country are flooded and this is uh, delaying the growth of crops significantly. So if uh, things don't dry out um, very soon and let, uh, you know, the planting occur, we're going to have, uh, you know, spikes in, in food prices of many grains and soya and things like that. This is a dry line, um, uh, you know, where the humidity is really high on this side because of the air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, humid air over the warm Gulf of Mexico, dry desert air coming here. So the humidity on this side is very low. Humidity on this side is very high. Temperature is about the same. And this structure combined with the jets coming down is creating huge numbers of tornadoes. Um, and this is going to continue in the, in the next little while while tremendous energy, uh, convective available potential energy um, in this region, um, you know, and uh, huge, so huge flooding, huge um, issues with flash flooding and very high winds and many tornadoes being generated. Okay, so I have to talk about the Arctic a bit because the Arctic melt season has taken off with incredible speed. 
So what this image is showing is, um, and I can expand it here, if my computer is uh, working. Actually, no, this one's not expandable eh, for some reason. Okay, um, so basically what's happening here is this is the, this is a plot of the melt in the, the, the area covered by ice in the, the ice concentration is given here. So this is open water. This is 100% ice. Um, and this is the area of the ice dropping off here. This is 2019. So th this is previous years, 2018, 2017, back to 2013, all these other curves. So even, you know, in the most, among the most recent years, the ice is just plummeting off. And all of these years were setting near records when during when they were occurring so the ice in the Chukchi and Beaufort seas is um, is rapidly dropping so let's have a look so this basically covers um, this starts on about May 3rd or May 4th and runs to the 24th so what it's showing is you know look at all of the fracturing and breaking of the ice all of the open water pockets appearing. You can see the ice pulling away from the land here. Um, this is the uh, Bering Strait here, right? So it's kind of a tilted view of the, of the Arctic. And you can see all of the, you can see how, how thin and fractured and broken the ice is. And it's rapidly decreasing in area this year, much more rapidly than in other years. Okay, today is one of the climate strike days. It's uh, Friday. This, so this, um, you know, striking for students, striking for the climate, you know, initiated by Greta Thunberg um, a while back. Um, and it's spreading across and around the world. Um, even, you know, the, this is, uh, Bill McGibbon has tweeted about African, um, across the African continent, all of these different people in different places, you know, over 50, over 50 cities across Africa where there's rallies to, um, you know, where the students are being joined, um, day of action, you know, climate strike pictures. So, you know, join groups like Extinction Rebellion, the Sunrise Movement, you know, you don't have to be a student to go out on Fridays and join the students in these, in these uh, climate rallies. Um, I've been to a number myself, but, uh, um, need to go to more. Okay, this is an image here. There's been a lot of talk about biodiversity collapse. Okay, um, you know, and some people are, you can't think of these, anything in, in, a, in a vacuum or in, in, or in a, a void. Okay, everything is connected to everything else. So the abrupt changes in climate um, are clearly causing migrations of flora, you know, plants and animals to higher latitudes to try to main, to try to access temperature and precipitation regimes that these species are used to. And because of climate change and the overall warming of the planet, those areas are closer to the poles. So there's massive migration of areas to the poles, but there's lots of these biodiversity hotspots that are being significantly degraded. So this is a study about collapse being driven by US consumer patterns. And you can find all of these things by just going to my Twitter feed. Um, so basically, so the US being here is in, it's not, it's how this, how the US is affecting the rest of the world. So there's no colors here on the US. So we can divide it into terrestrial and marine. Um, and if you look at the marine, look at these, hot spots over here. I mean, the water is just getting too warm and um, there, there's huge losses of biodiversity in these regions. And uh, on land, the highest areas, some of the highest areas are also on land here, huge vast and tracks in, the, in um, Asia, you know, uh, South America, right? Various countries in Africa. Um, the southeast of Australia, etc. Okay, so this is an interesting study that just came out recently. Um, this is showing the Nares Strait 
Um, the Arctic Ocean, it's showing ice export. So this is the ice concentration. Again, open water, 100% ice. This is Greenland. This is Ellesmere Island. And this is showing ice that is exported through the Narrow Strait um, as a function, you know, over, over year, many years. So what you can see is like here, the ice is all broken up here and there's huge export of ice. Okay, let's let, wait till it starts over again. It, it's coming up to present. So what you can see is there's a lot of there's there is a lot of variation. There's 2019 present day. So it starts in about April of 2013. So this is ice here, solid ice, and it's breaking up here. So you can see the water, uh, the blue, and the ice being exported. Okay, the ice moving, and so it, it there is a there is variation. Um, from month to month, year to year. But what we're seeing is this th this whole strait here is being cleared out more and more often recently as it is as it was shown there. Right? The whole all the ice is broken up and the whole strait is cleared off. There used to be an ice bridge forming here <coughs> where the ice would get piled and ridged up there and that would reduce the amounts of export through the strait. Also, you can see more recently, in more recent years, the ice, the thickest sea ice that was left, and it was thought it would be around for a long time, is in these regions. It's not multi-year ice, it's just ice that is ridged up. You get the Beaufort Gyre flow, and then the ice gets pushed up here and ridged, so you have the thickest ice there. It acts as a plug to stop export of ice through these islands and through the Nair Strait. But in more recent years, the ice is so fractured and weak and broken up that there's none of these ice bridges forming in these channels so that the the export of ice can continue through all of these channels where it never used to. So that's another mechanism, um, sort of feedback mechanism that is causing significantly more loss of sea ice um, in more recent years than, than before. This was a, this is a very interesting um, study that was done. I mean, words are very important and choice of words are very important. So this is a study that divides up. It's a U.S. study. So the Democrats are on the left in the uh, bluish color. Yellow is independent voters and the right are the Republicans. And this is their emotional intensity or the reaction of these particular people um, to these terms. So climate change so look at the Republicans here. Climate change doesn't stir up the emotions in Republicans. Um, global warming is a bit better than climate change. Um, weather destabilization is higher. Environmental collapse is a bit lower than weather destabilization. Look at environmental destruction. It really stirs up the emotional and gets emotional engagement and audience attention with Republicans. Environmental destruction. And then the climate crisis here is is the second highest. OK, there's not so much change for Democrats across all these terms or for independents across these terms. But there is a large change for a Republican response of, of using those terms. So the recommendation clearly from here is start calling instead of using these other terms, call it environmental destruction. Right. Whenever you want to say climate change or global warming, you know, Maybe if you say environmental destruction, then you'll get more response from Republicans in the U.S. So, you know, and there's a significant, huge difference here. Look at the level here is just over one. It's almost four times more emotional intensity to say environmental destruction when you're talking to Republicans than to say climate change, for example. So, so words do matter. Now... Many of you are aware that the, you know, the most important number to watch is the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. As long as that's high and rising, uh, all climate policy is basically ineffective. And, you know, we're pumping more and more CO2 into the atmosphere from our land use changes, fossil fuel emissions. So what this is, is this is comparing 2019 to 2018 on a week, weekly basis from January through the end of April. And what you can see here is, look at this, the CO2 rise in parts per million is 4.48 ppm. So the, the thicker the, 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 the blue bar, the more the rise. Thank you.